Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. Having defined precedence, the left-to-right relationship, and dominance, the up-down relationship in the tree, there are other kinds of relationships between nodes that we might want to characterize. In particular, we might want to talk about the structural prominence of two items um, that does not rely upon a dominance relationship. So we might want to talk about how prominent something is in the tree that doesn't dominate something else, so they're not connected by a line. And this is a relationship called C command. So we can talk about one item sort of being higher up in the tree than another, um, even when they're not connected by lines. And we do this using C command. So intuitively, um, C command is the relationship between some node and its sister and all the daughters of its sister. So if we look at this tree here, we'll see that A, C commands its sister, which is C, and all of the daughters of its sisters, um, D, E, F, G, H, so daughters and granddaughters and so on. So A, C commands all of those nodes. So this is again a structural prominence relationship. A is more prominent than all those things, but it doesn't rely upon um, being on top of them in the tree. Note that it is an um, that uh, just because one node C commands another doesn't mean that they they say C command each other. So, for example, A does not A C commands D, but D does not C command A. All right. So here's a formal definition: A C commands node B if every node dominating A also dominates B, and A does not itself dominate B. So what does this mean? So it means you take um, some node, you look for its mother, and everything else that um, the, its mother dominates is C commanded by it. Um, you, cannot you cannot C command anything that's underneath you, so you cannot C command um, things you dominate. Um, so the first part of the rule is essentially sisterhood, look for sisters, and aunthood, so all the things that are daughters and granddaughters of the sister. And then you just um, can't see command anything that uh, you yourself dominate. Now, um, this really comes down to two parts. Um, one kind is called symmetric C command, and symmetric C command amounts to sisterhood. So symmetric C command is when A symmetrically C commands, uh, sorry, when A commands B and B commands A. So they, they C command each other. So in our tree here, A and B symmetrically C command each other. So A C commands B and B C commands A. Um, notice that A does not symmetrically C command D, E, F, G, and H. Those are not sisters, okay? Asymmetric C command is the reverse of that. Um, so uh, asymmetrically C commands B if A C commands B, but B does not C command A. Okay, so intuitively, this, these are the cases where we have an anthood or a great anthood relationship. So A AC, asymmetrically C commands B, E, F, G, and H. Right, because those guys uh, do not C command A, but A C commands them. Just as we had a local version of um, uh, dominance, that's immediate dominance, and we have a local version of precedence, that's immediate precedence, we do in fact have a local version of government. Now, it's not called immediate C command for some reason. It's called government, which is a traditional term from... Um, from grammar from way back. But um, it amounts to being local C command. Now remember those local government, those local dominance and precedence relationships um, relied upon the notion that if there was nothing intervening between them, they were local. 
So uh, with immediate precedence, A, B, G, because B intervenes between A and G, B, uh, that means that A does not immediately precede uh, G. This is the same thing here. Um, a node governs another node if it C commands it, and there's no intervener. So there's no need such that, um, there's no node G such that G is C commanded by A and A asymmetrically C commands B. Now, this definition is a little tricky because it turns out that it is what we call relativized. So what counts as the intervener can vary. So, for example, when you're looking at two heads, the intervener is another head. If you're looking at two phrases, then the intervener is another phrase. So, um, this is a little more subtle than the other cases. So, um, here we have our tree, um, and we see that A does not govern B because G intervenes. And this is assuming that A, G, and B are all heads, for example. So if A, G, and B are all heads, then A governs G, G governs B, but A does not govern B. All right? Now, if G was another category, so say G was a phrase, then A may well govern B in that circumstance, which makes it a little tricky. Now, the good news for you is that we rarely use govern anymore. Govern was a very popular um, structural relationship back in the late 1980s and early 90s. It was used um, as a mechanism for indicating what we call licensing relationships. Those are relationships where you need one item to be in a particular structural configuration with another in order to be grammatical. We don't use govern so much anymore. Um, but it's good to know what it means, because if you ever read any of the older literature in syntax, you're going to want to understand what govern is. So, essentially, govern is local C command.